All right, good morning, everyone. This is Dr. Bill with World Bible School, and welcome to Friday Morning Conversations. Good to see Rita Alvarado uh, joining us this morning and others who are already chiming in. Uh, each week we bring you this broadcast. Uh, we bring teachings and concepts which are beyond what uh, is often considered normal uh, Christian conversation for sure uh, so that we can discover more of the eternal Christ who is within us even before the foundation of the universe. So, uh, so, so important. Okay, this morning uh, Apostle Brian Christian is back with me. Good morning, sir. How are you? I am doing very well, Bishop. It's uh, an honor to be with you each time. I just, I really appreciate hanging out with you and ministering with you and sharing with the people. Yes, amen. And we've been looking forward to this. Um, I want to remind everyone uh, that Apostle Brian's uh, book, uh, The Everlasting Gospel of Christ, is available at Amazon.com. I'll be posting the link here in just a moment. Uh, but uh, today we are talking about uh, reconciling memory. Now, as I did the write-up, I actually went crazy with it, uh, just going back to eternal memories and 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 all of that. And I think that that we can reconcile in terms of knowing uh, eternal memories. Uh, recently, I was uh, I don't know. I just had a moment where it was almost like I stepped out of time, and I was there at the walls of Jericho with Joshua. And uh, I believe that the many-membered body is the, the cloud of witnesses actually can interact with creation. Uh, so uh, as we get into this this morning, good to see Brett Erickson joining us this morning and uh, others who are already chiming in. Uh, so what is reconciling memory? Uh, the question still arises, do we have eternal memories, not only in, in a previous lifetime t in terms of as spirit beings from eternity past, but, uh, but even in what earth years you have existed, uh, what about the mind uh, and how memory works, uh, and then how uh, we shift uh, the present by reinterpreting the past or taking a look at things that you've had things that are gnawing on you just eating at you and you can't seem to let go of uh, those memories have not been reconciled so uh, I'll just say this everything we encounter in our present experience is being filtered through past conclusions and you know what we understand about conclusions is how they influence our lives um, for example I mentioned this to Apostle uh, Brian uh, good to see Angie Long joining us this morning. Uh, that this example, that uh, the thing I agreed with in my past memories, or in other words, that I concluded uh, that I was possibly rejected. Uh, maybe those were words that were spoken over you. Uh, I chose to live from that conclusion. And um, you know, here's the thing: uh, that past conclusion has to be replaced with something better, with something greater, with something that brings healing, which of course is uh, truth. Apostle Brian, you stated that to remove the conclusion or replace it with truth enables a whole new perspective, which changes my past reality. What are we talking about here as you bring us into this topic this morning? Well, you know, you touched on uh, quite a few sides of this, which I'm hoping we can hit on yes. uh, uh, together because uh, eternal triggers well, there's eternal memories and there's eternal triggers. Uh, you'll have certain things trigger you in the spirit uh, with a word or with a specific situation. You happen to be somewhere. You're having this deja vu. Things are clicking together. We call them a confirmation. But that's a that's an eternal trigger. It's triggering uh, in in a positive way uh, who you've always been. But we also have triggers that feel negative, even though there's really no such thing as a negative emotion, there can be a wrong conclusion on events in our life that actually store uh, the feeling of that conclusion uh, in the form of emotion in that particular place. And years later, it's now at a subconscious level. We're not conscious of it. We're not thinking about it. We've even cognitively uh, justified that past and and, you know, come up with common sense and said, yeah, yeah, I know we were all kids back then. And, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, you know, people say what people say, people do what people do. But that emotion is still there because it hasn't been dealt with. There's still a lie that you have believed about yourself in past trauma or past situations. And so when that happens, the present 
begins to do what? Push that button. Somebody that is reminding you of this person back here, but you're not conscious. You think it's the person in front of you causing all the problems. When in fact, your mind actually only works on where it's been, not where it's at, at least until it's renewed. Yes. Uh, when we get yeah. renewed, our mind all of a sudden comes into the now. But really, technically, uh, when you're dealing with the finite human experience, the catalyst for the mind of Christ, what, what, it, what, how, do, how, how do we stay in the now? Well, the moment I say now, it's already gone. Uh, let's try that again. Now, up oh, too late. We already passed it. In yeah. other words, every now my humanity encounters is as it passes into memory. All right. And so we're really not going to the future. We're really not uh, staying in the now. We're actually viewing the now from the past. And so we're really only working on our past in a degree. So when you when you hear scriptures like uh, forget that Paul said this, uh, forgetting those things that are behind you. Right. Pressing on to that, which is that that scripture has been so taken out of context uh, by preachers. And uh, if you read the scriptures before it, it's talking about um, letting go of the self-righteousness and the religiosity. It has nothing to do with repressing your past or burying the pain. And what, what we've done in church is we have uh, named it, claimed it on the outside, but yet on the inside, we're hurting. We're having to perform to keep that smile on our face instead of allowing Christ to make all things new by a new perception uh, throughout your history. Yes, yes. Uh, and and most people, I, I would think, are very aware that everything you do right now, a moment later, is already in the past. Uh, if you, uh, if somebody made a rude comment to you on Facebook, for example, and you really got hurt and offended by that, uh, that wound, it, a moment later, becomes in the past. And you can reconcile that immediately, uh, and that past memory becomes uh, just a, a, a something that you remember, but you've already uh, come to a conclusion about it. But unfortunately, there are a lot of people who uh, say, for example, someone my age at 66 at this moment uh, in this in my Earth years, uh, I may have had something from my childhood that really was hurtful to me, and I'm still carrying that around, and every now and then it eats at me. Um, and, and the truth is, what happens is it's always there gnawing at me and can steal a present victory that I should be living in uh, because I'm, st I'm, I'm, I'm almost like in duality, okay? I'm trying to attain this victory or walk in this place that I'm getting a revelation of, of the eternal Christ, but yet I'm still drawn to this past hurt, this past wound. Um, something that I discovered, uh, I want to read this real quickly from Isaiah 46, verse 3. Listen to me, O house of Jacob and all the remnants of the house of Israel, who have been upheld by me, from birth, this word birth literally means in the belly, who have carried, have been carried from the womb. Uh, so what we understand from this verse, first of all, is that uh, it's not being birthed in our human form, it's that we were birthed from the womb of God first yes. and foremost. So as spirit beings, we, and that scripture really does uh, go back to uh, the beginning of time, to eternity past. And so we were birthed forth from the womb of God. Uh, and, and, I, and I personally, this is me personally, and you might have a different view on this. Personally, I do not believe that spirit beings who fully function as spirit, soul, and body, but as one with the Father in the realm of the supernatural, do not get offended or wounded or it's like, why couldn't I have been with Elijah or why couldn't I have been with Abraham? But we actually were we're just not awakened to those eternal memories yet. but And I know you've had a lot of those experiences. But here's the thing about it, uh, that in our earth years, once we are, uh, I like to say that we reflected ourselves as spirit through the portal of a human mother's womb, as the Bible says in Philippians 2, that Jesus uh, came in the appearance of man. So in this natural realm of the senses where everything is influenced by what I see, hear, and touch, I appear 
in this human form so that I can interact with other people who don't know that there's any such thing as spirit. And and so in those human years, uh, there can be a lot of baggage. Uh, you know, people say, I came into this marriage with a lot of baggage. And yeah. Yeah, that's true. You you really can. You really can bring some baggage. I know for me, uh, uh, we were married. I was 18 years old, uh, January the, the 6th, 1973. We got married. And I, I was 18. I had some baggage. And, you know, the first 10 years of our marriage, a lot of that baggage really did reflect in our lives. And so I'm saying that to say that, if you have not resolved things that you have, you know what a conclusion is, everybody. It's something that you made a decision on. And so you, you may say, I have the right to be hurt because of how my parents treated me or how my spouse treated me or how a church congregation or a friend treated me. And you come to a conclusion or you come into agreement with that wound. And it's like you hang on to that thing just because, you know what, you can get out of agreement with it and you can actually let truth uh, bring a healing to that. So uh, so in spite of, of what I'm talking about with eternal memories, even in this human realm experience, we have eternal we have memories and you know uh, apostle i know that there are people you deal with that have not come to a, a, a resolve in terms of things of the past and they're living in a state of constant division within themselves confusion within themselves and um uh, where where is this going to take people? I mean, if you're going to live in the in the hurt and the wound, uh, you're always going to be a person that's looking for the next offense to come around. It's very true, very true, and unfortunately, it's starting to uh, uh, pour over into the movement that is presently happening. Yes, um, and I notice people swapping doctrines, and so uh, <laughs> you know, for most of you that are watching this program out there, uh, you believe in grace, sonship, oneness, eternity. You're on here because you're done with religion. You're done with the lie of separation. You're yeah. now in an inclusion, fully one with Christ and one with one another revelation. But what happens is, is when we have emotional pain, which led us to the lie of separation doctrine in the first place to justify the condemnation that was already there. Um, if that condemnation and self-evaluation and the wrong perception of ourselves at an, at an experiential and emotional level in our lives, it, it's still allowed to, to stay in our, in, in our lives or in our belief system, then we will simply swap doctrines. We'll go to the oneness doctrine, uh, but we won't have, it won't be ex the experience or our reality. We will constantly be trying to perform to even measure up there. And, and so as I've been noticing some of this, and, uh, you know, we are perfect and complete as spirit. We are inexhaustible as spirit. But if I can't get my butt off the couch to go mow the lawn, take out the garbage, help, help my spouse, spend time with my kids, and yet I'm claiming oneness, completeness, and perfection, uh, then it has now become a facade. Uh, yeah. You know, we've had to actually uh, uh, add a new dynamic to our ministry uh, lately um, in which, you know, we travel all over. We minister all over on the everlasting gospel. And even though we're still ministering the everlasting gospel, the father has told me to bring into the forefront uh, a ministry that, well, God told me I'd be doing about 15 years ago. Now, I've, I've done the inner healing movement. I went through a lot of that and there was some good stuff and not so good stuff. OK, um, but I felt that the old version of inner healing, which I don't even believe in inner healing, I believe in mind renewal. I'm not getting healed. On. I'm unlocking uh, the truth of who I've always been. So it's it changes the posture to where it's no longer uh, obtaining, but unveiling. No, not performance, but grace. Yes. And, uh, you know, but uh, years ago, uh uh, about 14, 13, 14 years ago, I've been doing the, inter, uh, I was doing inner healing for 15 years with tremendous results. Uh, and, uh, but for about 14, 13 years ago, God said to me, you're going to, you're going to come up with your own inner healing ministry. And it's going to be called shift S H I F T. Um, and, uh, I said, okay, what does that mean? He says, it's an acronym for sanctify historical illusions, finding truth. And uh, I said, OK, oh, I forgot all about it because I got burned out on the inner healing movement. So I was ready to move on, you know, 
And so my wife over the last two years has been saying, honey, we need to, you need to start doing some inner healing on people. I said, what are you, what are you talking about? We're, we're perfect and complete lacking nothing. They'll get it. I'll just keep revelating. I'll just keep teaching it and they're going to get it. Now, here's the thing. People can get it through hearing, but right. they only get it to an extent because it, it's only hitting their intellect. And the reason why is because the pain that they don't want to face over here is now <clears throat> being buried more by the revelation they're presently hearing from me. So now that revelation becomes the protection uh, to prevent them from mind renewal at an emotional level. You understand right. what I'm saying? How, right. how people will claim, they're claiming things, but out of their pain, out of their fear, out of their insecurity. And th those people are actually the hardest to work with with doing a session on a shift session where we go into the, to the past and they have to feel the pain. You know, if you're not willing to face the pain, embrace every, th that's taking every thought captive. That's, that means to embrace it. Uh, then you cannot follow the scent of the belief system into that historical moment. See, I, I truly believe that every past event in our life is directly linked to a stream of emotion that allows us to literally time walk into history, change the perception and even the experience of past trauma. And, 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 and what that does is it releases us from the past, but it also re, uh, changes everything in the present. We've been seeing this happening as I've been doing, uh, I don't know, I think just in the last three, three weeks, I've done about 50, 50 hours. I'll be doing five, five sessions today after, after we're done. One post is all I put up and people are flocking because they're hurting. They're claiming grace. They're claiming sonship. They're still doing right. the same thing they were in the, in, in the old school uh, you know, churches. Uh, and so they need to get reconciliation in their memories. So we, we are, uh, are as, as we've been preaching about this and teaching, uh, Bishop, you know, there is no separation. The lie of separation is exactly. one of the biggest lies that the church has believed. Okay. But no matter how much I claim that I'm not separated in my present situation or now, my, my history says something else in my mind. And so removing the lie of separation historically, I believe is a key that's going to remove the veils and unveil eternal memory uh, and, and, you know, unveil, uh, you know, our true eternal history, because the only facade that's standing in the way is our own conclusion. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Now, uh, someone said, what if you don't, what if you think, uh, what if you think uh, it was God who led you into the lies? Uh, my personal view is is God is not the author of destruction, confusion. The scriptures say clearly that that, that God uh, does not tempt any man, cannot be tempted himself, sure. and, and all of that. But uh, God will let you, since it's your decision, your choice, linger in as much pain and as much junk as you want to. I remember when a pastor friend of mine, uh, 10 years into ministry, begin to help me uh, deal with the things that were really bothering me, especially from my childhood. But it didn't end there. I had to come to grip with some things personally, not other, somebody else's counsel, not their ministry. I had to really buy it on the inside because here's the thing. A lot of people are saying there is no separation. I'm not separated from God, but then I'm mad at my brother. You know what the scripture says is that how can you love God whom you have not seen and hate your brother whom you have seen? And so when I think about that, there's, here's what I think. I think that, no, I don't want to go back and revisit any past pain. I don't want to live in that, but if it's unresolved in you, you need to get that resolved because it will always be a point of, of duality, uh, which is separation. There'll always be that segment of separation within you. Now, let's understand this. Uh, first of all, we need to be aware of the fact that the human brain, uh, a lot of people say, yeah, you got to get it up here and then you got to get it down your heart. Well, listen, I mean, let me just explain. When we're pointing to the, the head, we're in essence 
technically pointing to the human brain. Uh, if you could x-ray, uh, go you have an x-ray on your head or on your full body, you would see a brain, you would see a uh, uh, lungs, you would see a hu human heart, but what you would not see is you would not see the soul and you would not see the spirit because they are in the supernatural realm or of the supernatural realm. Even, uh, even uh, remember the movie uh, Time Cop with Jean-Claude Van Damme. Uh, same matter can't occupy the same space. Well, when it comes to you being human, uh, a, a having a human appearance and also being spirit, the spirit of one as spirit, soul, and body, you can inhabit the same space. Okay, so you're interacting with yourself, whether you realize it or not. But the brain holds long-term and short-term memory uh, pertaining to motor function, uh, which has to do with getting out of bed in the morning, uh, how to put your clothes on, uh, and 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 go about your daily routine. Uh, but true memories are stored in the soul. Now, there's a couple of ways to look at the soul. First of all, let's say uh, Scripture says in the Old Testament that we came here upright. So I came here fully spirit fully manifested, even as a baby, I was still fully spirit. Even in the nine-month gestation, I was fully spirit. When I burst forth out of my mother's womb, I was still fully spirit. But now I'm beginning to be uh, filled with in the indoctrinations of what my parents are saying to me, what others are saying to me, uh, that, that uh, only understand a human realm perspective. And they're definitely influenced by their human experience. But in the soul, there's also that virgin part uh, that cannot that that is fully spirit that communicates with you as spirit communicates with the the cloud of witnesses as one uh, but there's also that which is being renewed why is there a part that's being renewed as Paul told us in Romans 12 it's because uh, there is a part that is unrenewed and the, and the part that creates that third part is that which is being renewed, which becomes in agreement with spirit. And so I'm saying all of this to say that in the suke, the, the, the rational uh, and immortal soul, uh, the seed of feelings, desires, affections, and all, all of that mind, will, intellect, and emotions, uh, that part... Uh, that, that that is unseen by the human eye. And if you really want to get technical about it, for you who are uh, those that study Greek and Hebrew and, and all of that, I'll just give you this piece of information, uh, that the reality is you uh, actually, uh, the word heart is the Greek word cardia, which comes from the Latin word C-O-R, which I interpret as core, for the core of our being. And it doesn't matter to me if you measure head to toe and side to side and you pick that's the sp center. I did that early on to get a visual picture. And uh, But however you do it, just realize that within you there's a soul. And this soul reflects things, especially, uh, and I don't mean to be talking so much, Apostle, but this has really got me no. stirred up because this is this is where I live in terms of, of, of theological studies. Uh, because so many people, like you said, are living from... Uh, past wounds or past experiences that are very unpleasant and they have not reconciled them those memories so now god is doing this wonderful thing where we really are escaping the entire doctrine of separation but here's the problem you said this you said many today are simply swapping and you already mentioned this swapping the doctrine of separation with the doctrine of inclusion and are still struggling with religion because their minds are still living in past emotional pain whether through trauma or bad things happening as well as through the absence of good things. Think about that. Why doesn't anything good happen to me? Uh, there are filters in which we see our lives uh, as the foundation for how we see God, others, and ourselves. Renewing the mind begins with being aware of what you feel, not what you think. And I love that because I have said for many years that what that that uh, that knowing is greater than feelings. So the revelation I come into uh, is it replaces feelings, but guess what? If that revelation doesn't really resolve a past conclusion, then what do you do? So uh, what do you think about uh, what you feel and, and think and, and what this statement you just made? Would you just talk about us uh, some more about this? Well, you know, uh, I, I, you know, I believe that it's all, it's all connected a wheel within a wheel. So, yeah, uh, it's not yeah. like your humanity is separate from spirit. It's simply right. spirit expressing itself in another form or a slowed down version, as Kay would say. That's good. You know, uh, 
but I, I will say that uh, there are there's spiritual motion that transitions into emotion in the in the human response. And so we as spirit said, let's put on a finite human experience and let's have an expression that we have, have not had before. You know, and so, uh, you know, and I know the question was asked earlier, I, for some reason, I can't see messages, but I don't know if I've got it set up right on the chat, but, um, but uh, so you said somebody had said, well, what about, was God, had God ordered these things in the past? Yeah, you know, did, was, it, was it God who led us into lies? Yeah, was it God? No, God doesn't lead you into lies, but yet God knows the end from the beginning, of which course. also means that none of it is a surprise to him. And so, uh, which means none of it is a surprise to you as spirit. You're full, you're, you're fully knowledgeable as spirit to know what you got yourself into when you, when you came to planet earth. I totally believe that. I don't believe our spirit is ignorant. I believe our, our human thinking is ignorant. Come on. And, uh, and now, uh, can some of those things be used? All of it's going to be used. doesn't mean God led you into all of it. it means we made bad choices, but yet at the same time, we god is still going to redeem all of it all things work together for good and so i know in my own life uh, i made a lot of bad decisions uh out of my pain out of my rejection out of my woundedness and uh all of those decisions i made then are now trophies of glory and grace today they are they are the bridge of relatability to the people i've been sent and so every, every weakness and failure and fault in my life is now the validation for what I'm now moving in. And uh, because it flipped over, I, I went from my ashes to beauty, you know, and uh, I let go of the ashes. But again, this is perception based because really it's not about good and evil. It's not about this is bad and this is good. It's about the conclusion in my mind to believe that that actually stores emotion. Now, you know, what's what's really interesting, uh, Bishop, is um, that it's not the actual event that traumatized us see we always think of it as the event that is the point of trauma mm -hmm. but it is actually what i believed about myself in the event that creates the trigger and so it again it, it, events are neither good nor bad but the interpretation of myself within that event that now makes it good or bad in that sense and so what we're dealing with is we're dealing with uh, a perception or a conclusion and now you know i know a lot of times i could i could sit down with some people and i could say well i'm just going to tell you you're not there anymore you, you got free uh you know uh, especially when you're dealing with people uh, uh that have either come out of ritual abuse or uh, sexual abuse um they are stuck that's called a metamorphic lie okay and it means it was once true, but it's no longer true. But if they have not come into truth, they're still stuck there emotionally, subconsciously. Mm -hmm. So when their present spouse comes and hugs them, all of a sudden they're like, get away from me. And they have all of these sexual issues, repressed issues where they can't, uh, they can't be intimate with their spouse. Intimacy is a problem. And they don't understand why or they blame their spouse. But really way back here is a situation which they have been held emotionally it, they they made it out and i could sit and tell them intellect to intellect you made it out you're no longer there and they can agree intellectually they can agree yeah yeah i did make it out i don't know why i'm so emotional about it you know but the next time their spouse wants to be intimate immediately mm -hmm. their mind goes back here they're reliving uh, you know, a molestation or a rape scene, you know, this is what's going on emotionally. Okay. With extreme, extreme situations, which mm -hmm. I've actually worked with. And so, uh, but you can tell them all day long, you can quote scripture all day long. It's only going to hit the intellect, but you you do not live from your intellect. You live from your experience. So your intellect is really only there to be the dictionary for your experience you know, to, to kind of just give the cognitive, logical overview of what you experientially believe. But we live from our experience. We do live from emotion more than we do cognitive thinking. 
Uh, and what has happened is, is when I can't deal with my emotion, then my cognitive thinking will go on overdrive to reason its way through, to logically figure out how I can guard or justify why I feel pain, come up with a theological standpoint in our own head <laughs> to yes. say, well, you know, uh, I just, uh, if I just try real hard and I do these five things, um, then I won't actually have to go there anymore. I won't have to feel it. I'm always, ever, that, that seems to be the key for mankind. Always trying to come up with the next best thing to never have to feel this over here mm -hmm. or do this over here. Well, what if it was, it was all good in the father, in, in the way in which we embrace our past? What if embracing our past is not about re-traumatizing yourself, uh, but simply about um, realizing how bound you were to just one little tiny lie that you believe and just long enough to allow truth to come in and turn that which was a lie into a glorious encounter with the father and and now your 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 memory from 40 years ago maybe you didn't get awakened in christ till 10 years ago but 40 years ago you were you were walking through all this trauma well now christ is there now you're experiencing him 40 years ago not just 20 years ago you know until we're finally back to realizing we were born upright and that basically means dealing with all of that trauma. Now, the great thing about it is, and I, this is just kind of, I'm just throwing a lot of stuff out here, but the great thing about it is you go to uh, the source and origin of where a lie first came in, a lie that you believed about yourself, okay? And uh, it, will it will actually clear out whole sections of memory all the way up to the present, which is dealing with one memory. So you're yes, not having yeah. to sit there going, Oh, what memory do I need to go to? And how many I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to be doing this the rest of my life. I got to spend eight hours a day going to memories. No, we're talking about using this as a way of life that every time you get triggered, you're not quoting scripture and using your intellect to guard your pain. Some of the hardest people to, to, to get restored in their mind are those who know a lot of scripture and have had a lot of prophecy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because that becomes their guardian lie to deal with the lies because the moment they feel pain they go to the quoting they go to the claiming they go to the you know well i'm just standing on this brother i'm just believing in this or they blame an external uh you know uh fantasy entity like the devil okay and they right, start right. Uh, doing that as well all right so you know they need a scapegoat whether it's uh religion uh, quoting scripture, past spiritual experiences can become scapegoats to not dealing with pain, these kinds of things. And so for this move that we are presently in to come into a full unveiling of fruitfulness, we, we need not repeat this, the, 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 the same things that have been repeated, you know, and that is trying to obtain and attain instead of simply being raw, real, facing your pain letting the father bring truth and uh, allowing spirituality to be supernaturally natural as one in our human experience. Because I don't believe humanity, uh, I don't believe uh, that, that the world has defined what humanity really is. I think they've defined a debased version of humanity, a, a, a sin-based humanity. Uh, I think uh, we have been deemed more as beasts than humans. Uh, through the church, through the Adamic fall, but we are simply evolving humans, and we're now starting to come into true humanity, which looks exactly like Jesus, and that's true humanity, not this broken down version that we've been taught, and, yes. uh, but, you know, but we also need to, you know, prepare this catalyst, this mind, uh, to begin to take on the reality of the mind of Christ without pain, without reserve, without the need. Uh, it should be maintenance free. We should not have to perform or, or, or try to manage our pain. It should be maintenance free. And I believe there, there is a way for that to happen multiple ways. Yes. Uh, but, but this becomes the lifestyle and the lifestyle. And I'll give you one example before I pass it on to you. And uh, that is this. If I'm in a present situation, I'm not saying I do this 100% of the time, 
I get triggered. I freak out. I, I miss what's <laughs> going on. Okay. We all do it. We've it's all done it. One person out there that doesn't have a lie in their brain somewhere. Okay. Just the way it is. So we're all in the same boat in, in, in many ways, but this has been my goal is when there's a present situation that hits me, um, I have to, uh, I have to realize that it is not my present situation. That is the source of my pain. It is an echo of the past. So if I take my present situation as the problem, I have now come into um, denial. I'm in denial. Okay. And now this is, of course, if I'm triggered, if I'm not triggered, then it's a present situation. It's somebody else projecting their stuff. Okay. Um, and that's okay. Because now you can be peaceable and you can reflect Christ to them without effort. But if, if I'm triggered, then this is my stuff on purpose, sovereignly set up to renew my mind. Now, if I can get excited about that and go, oh, wow, this is about me, not because I failed, but because I believed I was a failure. That's why it's about me. And the father is coming after that lie. And so in that place, I simply focus in on it. I don't evaluate it because my intellect says you got to figure it out. No, my emotion has its own belief. Okay, I'm going to feel that. What does that feel like? Well, it feels like feels like shame. Okay, I'm going to focus in on that. Well, now why, why do I feel like I'm ashamed? Well, I, I just feel like I'm not good enough. Unloved, okay? Now, all of a sudden, I realize that this present situation that I thought was there to come and steal my faith was actually there to, to restore my faith and was there to reveal to me where I had been trying to serve God out of a lie of shame and feeling unloved. So what do you think I'm going to promote? A performance-based ministry that constantly needs to be affirmed or, or you're, you're not going to be able to minister. You'll fall short and everything will collapse and the other shoe will drop, these kinds of things. Yeah, uh, it's amazing uh, people that uh, will not affirm others, but at the same time, they're, they're living in, in a place of darkness where they're, they're always wanting affirmation, always yeah. wanting a prophecy, always wanting a word. Uh, you know, I, I, you really uh, made me think of something. You, know, you can think about past memories, uh, but they're 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 already been resolved and it's not a point of pain it's just a memory uh but i i the perfect example i think for for me uh came up uh and i don't always talk about this uh publicly but uh i will say that in 1996 i was still pastoring after many years um i was also working a construction job as a foreman and i injured my back now that resulted two years later. I went back to college during that time and got another degree. Uh, I, I had a doctorate, but I also got a, um, a computer degree and a business degree. And uh, but when I graduated a month later, what happened was is I got out of bed one morning and I lost the ability to stand up straight. So I literally was bent uh, at a 90 degree angle. Uh, and so I'd have to raise my hat up or my head up to even see to walk. Uh, but the doctor uh, believed at that time that to uh, to handle that was to relax the muscles. So it was important that I go to bed and stay in bed. Well, I want to tell you, I lived in bed for almost three years. Uh, and and those three years ended up in a lot of pain, a lot of medications, a lot of things without resolving the problem. I ended up having back surgery in 2001. Now the back surgery wasn't intended to solve this problem, but it was intended to address some bad discs in my spine. But after surgery, I was a, I was upright. Okay. Now here's the thing. During that time, uh, with all the medication and things, I lost my memory. Now, when I say I lost my memory, I didn't remember how to walk. I did remember, I did forget how to, to, to drive uh, offensively. I, I didn't drive for three and a half years, so I would run over the curb and have to figure out, you know, this is where I belong. So, so I had to get my long-term memory, motor function uh, kicked in. But anyway, um, so I came out, here's the thing, I came out of that believing with no memory. Now, I will say with as much scripture and with all the education I had, I came out of that only remembering one verse of scripture, which was Proverbs 10, 7, the memory of the just is blessed. For me, the principle was that my memory as justified in the Lord is blessed. I have the ability to remember, but I had lost so much. Uh, many experiences in the past I had forgotten about. Many things, even in recent years, uh, my wife and I had uh, dealt with, with, with children, with family and stuff, I had forgotten. But 
as I begin to excel and begin to study again, it's like I had an accelerated memory, the ability to absorb information and retain it. But here's what happened, Apostle. I came out of that believing I would never be of any value in ministry again. I had lost my, my doctorate knowledge, uh, knowing Greek and Hebrew, knowing the Bible, uh, not exactly verbatim, cover to cover, but a lot of it, I'd lost it all, and I was like, and so young men would come, I got to where I could stay out of bed maybe six hours a day before surgery, and young men and different ones would come over and, and want me to mentor them, to father them, and I felt so useless and worthless, and, uh, and, and I want to tell you, this is one of those cases where in time, truth literally set me free, and, and it brought me face to face with that past memory that I had already drawn a conclusion conclusion on and and that and I came face to face with it realizing that I was of value in ministry I was of value to people and this was long before World Bible School University and working in education for about 10 years and and teaching different places and getting kicked out because of my theology and and about World Bible School University uh, was a real challenge for us because we're doing a literal university a legal university and putting all the pieces together without having a real model to, to choose from and all of that stemmed on when i believed i was of no value in ministry now i'm the founder of world bible school university now my wife on the other hand uh, uh, associate in business administration bachelor in business administration masters in business administration doctorate in theology super qualified super smart but i thought you know i'm just the dummy on the team and i i just don't have the memories well i found out that the memories that i lost I really didn't need because here's what happened. You talk about deconstruction. Uh, I was like went through an instant deconstruction, uh, oh, yeah. uh, and so I got a blank slate and like uh, God, let's build this thing and build it right. So I'm grateful. Uh, I, I, let me just say this: I'm not grateful that I lost my memory, but I'm grateful for the things that changed in the transition, in the journey. Because it used to be, and you, you and I talked about this before. It used to be that I really didn't like the journey at all. Uh, my life's journey, there were so many ups and downs, so many bad things. But I got to where I appreciated the journey because every step, good or bad, was a transition to the next step that brought me to today. Now, do I have anything that you can trigger? Um, it's very possible that I still have some stuff that can be triggered. Uh, stuff in marriage, stuff with family that can be aggravating because they're throwing their lives away. Someone will say, well, you don't understand addiction. You know, I had the equivalent of a heroin addiction from prescription medications. I went through withdrawals. I had to kick the habit, so to speak. And people say, I, I, I'm, I'm a smoker. I'm a drinker. I'm, I do drugs. You don't understand addiction. Man, I'll tell you what, sitting on the other side of the desk, I understand. I understand what what uh, uh, bad health situations can do to you and how it can traumatize you and a change of life can throw you into depression and uh, uh, because it's a natural thing the mind goes through. But you know what? Uh, when we were talking, uh, a scripture just came up. It's 1 Corinthians six seventeen that says, He that is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. The word spirit there can also be translated as one mind uh, and so one of the scriptures you gave me was Ephesians 4 23 and be renewed in the spirit of your mind and this is such an important verse of scripture uh, the uh, the uh, uh, amplified says be continually renewed in the spirit of your mind having a fresh untarnished mental and spiritual attitude uh, but being renewed is is super important but I think if you're not willing to go back, and I'm not saying, hey, go back to your childhood and remember your first thought that where you were wounded, and you know, I, I, I'm not saying that. I'm not saying do any kind of mental hypnosis, and uh, or or uh, what I'm saying is, is if you had a place that really brought you down, and it keeps bringing you down, it keeps affecting you go back and allow God to heal that moment and what he will do it's like your mom will take a, a cut that's festering and put a medication on it and bubble out the, the 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 infection with peroxide and and clean it up and bandage it and care for it uh, God will pour truth into that moment and you'll realize that the thing you had, had already come to a conclusion about was nothing more than a lie 
and Father will introduce truth to that. And I and I know it's you playing a big part in that, what you choose to believe, and so on. But you get really you become renewed in the depths of your mind, uh, in your thoughts. So, I, I just I just thought that example that's really amazing. really fit. No, no, you've been through it, uh, Bishop, and uh, that what you've been through has now allowed you to be all things to all people in those areas, and become a testimony of grace in that and ultimately that's what the father wants to reveal in our history that it wasn't in vain and see you got that revelation now had you not got that revelation you wouldn't be where you're at today you would have went a different you would have taken a different road you know and even though i believe we are predestined to be conformed to the image of christ uh that doesn't necessarily mean that every action and reaction in my life uh that god is you know uh saying it as it's happening or writing it down oh make sure you do this exactly you know, uh, but yeah, you do not. Here's the thing. I've had people come into my office and say, uh, you know, I need I need to heal the mind. And they sit down, they'd hand me a list. Well, huh. this is this is where I think the memories are, you know, and, and so I, I wad it up and throw it in the garbage right in front of them. <laughs> and I said, uh, now, how does that make you feel that I just threw that away? Well, it makes me angry. All right. Well, anger is not uh, an emotion. Uh, it's it's that which guards an emotion. I said, so anger becomes that which is guarding the pain. It isn't, anger isn't coming from the pain. Anger is guarding the pain. I said, how does that make you feel? Well, it makes me angry. I said, focus in on that anger. I want you to think about why you're angry. Well, I'm angry because you threw that away. Okay, so, so what does it feel like to not even have the right to be angry when I threw that away? Well, it makes me feel like, uh, you know, you're going to, you are you know, you're going to uh, uh, disrespect me again. I'm going to be disrespected, you, you know? <laughs> I said, okay, focus in on that. Now, Father, is that true? If he lets go of his right to be angry, will he be disrespected? What does the Father tell you? No, he says no. He said, because God, God's in control. Okay, all right. All right, so what do you feel underneath that anger? Well, I, I just felt invalidated that you didn't even consider. I felt unheard. That's what I believed about myself. All right, just focus in on that. Now, just feel that. Don't look for a memory. Just feel that. And you just report to me what comes to your mind. Well, all of a sudden I'm, I'm four years old and I'm trying to get my parents' attention and, but they just won't hear me. And I just feel invalidated. I said, focus in on that. Feel that. You got to feel it. It can't be intellect. We've been, we've been riding on the, on the intellectual side. So we don't have to feel it. You got to feel it because you've lived that experience. You're presently living that experience, even though it came from way back here, it's emanating all the way up into your present experience. Yes but it's no longer really going on. It's just an echo. So when they're back here and they re, re, they feel that pain, they've dealt with that anger that to, to, that's been guarding the pain. Father, what is the truth you want so-and-so to know here where uh, they believe that they're unheard and unloved? What does the father tell you? You know what? It doesn't need to be a long truth. It's usually because they're feeling it in the emotion. They're now time traveling because the stream of emotion is all through your history mm -hmm. and get there by intellect or logic, but you can get there by emotion. And so in that place, truth comes. Uh, I, I, I hear God saying, I've always been there and I've loved you and you're mine. Mm -hmm. Okay. How do you feel? Well, it's funny. I, I don't feel any more rejection. All right, let's come back to the present. Uh, how do you feel that I wadded up that piece of paper? Oh, I'm, I'm good with that. I just feel perfect peace. This is what I see day in and day out. Uh, Dr. Bill, and it's uh, especially in this season, day in and day out, uh, we're doing sessions like this, the shifts, the shift sessions. I have a series that's on uh, YouTube called the shift series for anybody that wants to see it. And just look up under the playlist there. Um, and uh, I have brought the up, an upgraded version. I haven't found any out there yet uh, that match this movement. That we're currently that's currently being emphasized in sonship oneness and grace most of the old school inner healings are dealing with sin consciousness duality uh dealing yeah. with demons so what i've done is i've cleaned it up and i've added my own flavor because pretty much the principles of of inner healing are all the same you're dealing with emotional pain and there's different methods in which you you know walk through uh, a renewed mind. Uh, so I've kind of cleared out all of the, the filler I've, and I've removed the demonic and the sin consciousness. I brought in the quantum uh, as well as the eternal. 
and I, I'm bringing, ma building this thing. And uh, I'm hoping that by the end of the year, I will have a 12 part series on, on this that's going to be in training form with a workbook and uh, possibly a regular book on it uh, as well. And, that, and then uh, we've even uh, recently opened a group on Facebook where we will be doing live Zooms because I really believe that the father is, is commissioning us to help, uh, to help bring this move into a place in which there's fruit that remains without the performance-based Christianity, but maintenance-free. And so we need peace and calm in some of those historical moments. It doesn't mean, and here's the thing, this is a seasonal thing. I'll tell you right now, if you're having a glorious time on a mountaintop, and you yeah. ain't being triggered, don't get a session. Yeah. Why? The father's not emphasizing it. But if, no matter how much you're trying to, you know, hear from God, you're just miserable and falling apart, you're in the season in which the father's saying it's time to renew the mind. It's time to, it's time to, to, to flip over your past in these areas. So there's a season for everything under the heaven. So just do it in accordance with the seasons. But I'm just so excited because... Uh, you know, we're coming into a time in which there's a lot more balance and maturity uh, in the body of Christ, in what's being taught. Uh, and, you know, we're, we might not be mainstream yet, Bishop, but we're getting there. This message that we have been bringing will be mainstream. And every, uh, every other move of God started out the same way ours is right now, with a minority bringing forth something that looks heretical to the majority until eventually the majority uh, realizes that it was God. And then it's fully accepted. And then we move on to the next thing God's saying or doing, you know? Yes. And that's been the downfall of many ministers and ministries in the past is we've actually tried to live in the moment of, I mean, for example, back when there were the Pentecostal days were really hot and heavy. And I'm not saying that for some people out there that they're still not. Uh, some people are living that. But here's the thing. When I was a young minister, um, 18, 19, 20 years old, I always felt like uh, there were other camps and other things that I, I thought there was something going on, something I needed to experience. And my leaders, my pastor, uh, my elders would say, you know, stay away from other groups, just stay in your own camp. And, and, and I was a good little Pentecostal boy and I obeyed. Uh, I feel like today that was to my detriment. Uh, and, and let me say this with a grain of salt. I'm not saying that some of the music out there today uh, F this, F that, and all about murder and all about shooting up. And I'm not saying that's wholesome music, but I am saying back in the the, the 70s, uh, back uh, the, back uh, in that time period when there was soft rock and there was the Beatles and the Bee Gees and, and et cetera, et cetera, uh, I was a real big fan. Uh, but I made a commitment to focus so much on worship music and to X out all of my past connection with rock and roll music uh, that I really felt like I hurt my future music position. But here's the thing. Uh, is it wrong to go back and relive or to refocus on old memories? Um, let's see. Feelings and emotions seem to be something that I have been unable to do lately. How do you, how do we, uh, how do we feel future, present, and uh, future desires or traumas? Why do feelings get rep uh, repressed or hidden? That's very good. Now, here's a scripture. This may be pertaining to something different, but I want to read this. Isaiah 46, verse 9. Remember the former things of old. That's a good place right there. Remember the former things of old. For I am God, and there is no other. I am God, and there is none like me. Now, I realize that... Uh, in a spiritual condition, when it comes to uh, me now uh, absorbing the, the uh, present revelation of truth and not getting caught in my Pentecostal days, and, and I moved on to charismatic circles, but I didn't camp there, I didn't build a house there, and then I went on to word of faith and, and, and kingdom and, and grace and all a part of those movements until today, I really don't know what movement I'm a part of because I am a part of all of them, yet I'm disconnected from all of them because I'm always flowing and moving with the thing that God is doing at the moment. So, yeah. you know, if someone says, well, I thought you believed this. Well, I used to, but that movement, uh, I didn't stay there. I moved yeah. on. Uh, yeah. So 
uh, do we remember the former things of old? Now, as spirit, in this natural awareness that this 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 influence of a sensory realm perception has kind of overtaken and influenced us, uh, you're still spirit. You still have the the Christ mind in you. But I have focused more on natural things. That if I can touch it, see it, and 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 hear it, then I believe it. Otherwise, I disregard everything else. But now that I'm seeing there are supernatural truth and there's supernatural memories. It, it, for me, I hear this, what Isaiah is saying, and, and this is God speaking and saying, remember the former things of old. So let's bring that forward to 2021. Uh, are there some things that I have uh, dealt with in my past that I've already made a decision about? I've come to a conclusion. But my conclusion uh, or my decision was based on a human form experience that really brought me into a lie and didn't bring me into truth. Is it okay to go back and revisit that? Well, I would say absolutely. And I'm going to give the rest of the time to Apostle Brian. When he's done, we'll, we'll come to uh, an end for today. But, you know, what do we do with those feelings that get repressed and hidden? How do we deal with all of this? Well, there's really five, five keys that I'll give you really quick. And maybe we can go into this more next week in more detail. But first and foremost, uh, why, why did it happen? Well, because we believed a lie about ourselves, because somebody that believed lies about them projected their stuff on you, especially Amen. children. And Amen. children uh, take everything upon themselves and take full responsibility for everything in their world. It's how their minds are wired, because there are hormones that are yet to be released uh, until puberty. This is why it says, uh, train a child in the way they shall go, and when they are old, they shall not depart. That word old is when they get hair, when they hit puberty. In other words, the training is before puberty because there are certain hormones withheld uh, up until puberty that prevent uh, really accountability or the ability to take responsibility for your own stuff and not the stuff of others. We mm -hmm. They take it all on. This is why children... Uh, are the ones that suffer the most during a divorce because they blame themselves. And so if there is not an, uh, a parent or a guardian near them that can actually explain in detail what is actually going on in their life to where they can lift some of that blame, then that child will, their, their belief system about themselves will be directly influenced by what is going on around them. Okay, so here's some five keys real quick here. Number one, um, you're going to identify what you feel in your present situation. You're not going to look for a memory. This is great. Why? Because cognitively, you're going to want to look, which is still you protecting you. Instead, you want to feel. You want to stop thinking about it and start feeling it. Why? Mm -hmm. Because we traumatize ourselves over and over and over again in, in the present with the past. We're constantly thinking about the past. We're just not, we're not conscious about it, but we're feeling it. We're reacting to it because it's not our present situation. It's an echo of the past. All right. So feel uh, number number two. Once once you have felt it, uh, you want to allow memory to come in. So uh, you're looking now for the source and origin, but you're not actually trying to find the memory. You're feeling the pain because your mind will automatically bring up memory of because you've been there before. And uh that's where you go. So the moment you feel it, you want to identify what you believe about what you feel. If it's uh, if it's rejection, uh, I, maybe it's uh, you know uh, I'm alone, uh, nobody cares, whatever it, whatever that statement is. You're looking for the lie statement. Third, it's it's uh, you know go to the memory uh, or allow the memory picture that matches that uh, to to uh, to connect with your present. Fourth, uh, or I'm sorry, also in third, deal with the guardian lie, mm -hmm. uh, which is anger, um, denial. This isn't going to work. You hear these little voices in your head. Ah, God's not going to help me. This isn't going to work. Those are all guardians. What do you got to do? You ask questions. Well, why do I believe this? What does this feel like? What does that feel like? What are you doing? You're peeling an onion and you're starting to learn how to communicate with yourself. See, what we do is we cry out to God, but we don't even talk to ourselves. All right. If I don't even know what I believe about myself and I'm claiming what God believes about me, how dysfunctional am I? Okay. It's more than just what does God think about me? It's all, what do I think about me? Because if I don't know what I think about me, I'm only going to agree to a certain level of what God thinks about me. 
all right? So really talking to yourself. When you feel or when some situation happens, feel it. Don't analyze it. Don't analyze to protect yourself from it. Feel it. Mm -hmm. What does this feel like? What do I believe about myself when I feel this? Okay. Now, once you've dealt with the guardian lies of anger, then, then you, you uh, again, the lie statement is emphasized in the base memory in which then you just invite the father to bring truth, come back to the present, feel it, try to feel the pain. I, we do this all the time. It's called re-traumatizing yourself, right? Where the hamster wheel keeps going and you're up all night and you just won't stop thinking about it and you're feeding that belief system and you're just in anxiety and fear. And okay, doing that on purpose for a purpose is completely different than staying up all night. All right. I mean, if I'm going to have to feel the pain, I'm going to do something about it. I'm going to, I'm going somewhere with this. I'm not just going to sit there, waste my time and lose sleep on it. All right. So it's not about you going and looking for it. It's about you feeling, using the present situation. Now, why the present? Because sovereignly the father knows what you are ready to deal with in your mind. And he knows times and seasons. And so whatever present situation is triggering you, that is God's sovereignty saying, all right, I know what I, what needs to be worked on. You don't, but this is how I'm going to help you just feel it and memories will come up and it will connect it. Okay. And, and that's the kind of the quick version of that, but I'm really encouraged that many right now are starting to realize how important it is to uh, not just preach about oneness, but to experience it historically. And yes. I, I truly believe that as we live it out as an experience, that the lens in which we have been viewing our life from the past is shifting to where, as Jesus said, I come to make all things new, all things, including your past. So if you think you got to forget what is behind you and hope you don't repeat it, how about taking all your weaknesses, faults, and failures and seeing them filled with the grace of God in which you now can can have uh, so much liberation that 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 you can freely speak to others about your past where they're at and without condemnation and you can now be an asset in their life because yeah. uh, you have something in common here and so being an epistle of christ written in each other's hearts and so just amazing bishop thank you so much for this time today i i, I was blessed yeah and we're going to come back to this next week and you know apostle uh i remember as a child, there were two perpetrators in my childhood. I can tell you the place. I can tell you the age. I can tell you the surroundings of the event. But what I can also tell you is that past memory has been dealt with and there's no pain attached to it. And, uh, and so if you've got a memory, past memory that still can be triggered and brings anger and uh, feelings of rejection and, and hopelessness, and especially that stems from separation. Look, you need to deal with that and be whole so you can fully participate in what God is doing, this move that God is doing. And uh, I think it's so powerful. Uh, Apostle, thank you so much. Um, looking forward to your next uh, book. Um, uh, the, the the first book, I, I'll get the link posted uh, in, in the, the chat room, but uh, everybody make sure you click like and then click share, uh, and we'll come back to this next week um, and uh, talk some more about this. So, so powerful, so necessary. Uh, again, I want to thank you, everybody who has been on uh, today, who has, has viewed, has, who has listened, and uh, also just uh, remember to click like and share. There's the link to P Apostle Brian's first book. And um, hey, we'll come back to this next week, and, and this is so much fun. Thank you so much, sir. I appreciate it. Thank you. All right, everybody. We love you. Have a great day, and we will see you next time. Amen. Amen.